This figure shows the timeline for transition to 100% clean, renewable wind, water, and solar power for all purposes among 139 countries, and also what would happen if we don't transition to 100% wind, water, and solar. First, the top line, well, this shows from 2012 to 2050. It shows the, at first, the business as usual projected end use power demand, which is the top line. So in 2012, there were 12.1 terawatts of total power used for all purposes. That's electricity, transportation, heating, cooling, industry, agriculture, forestry, and fishing uh, worldwide. So end uses means what people actually use to power their cars, to uh, run light bulbs, or to run their dishwasher, uh, or to run industry. So end uses, but does not include transmission distribution losses, for example. But what, and the Ozen uses are expected to go up if we don't do, if we don't transition by 2050, those are expected to go up to 20.6 terawatts or trillion watts. However, if we electrify all energy sectors and pro provide that electricity with clean, renewable wind, water, and solar, electricity demand is expected to go down about 42.5% to about 11.84 terawatts. Now, 23 percentage points of that reduction or a 4.7 terawatt reduction is due to the fact that electricity is more efficient than combustion. Uh, for example, an electric car, uh, 80 to 86 percent of the electricity going into the car goes to move the car and the rest, rest is waste heat. For a gasoline car, only 17 to 20 percent of the energy in the gasoline goes to move the car and the rest is waste heat. So the end use power demand actually decreases by a factor of four to five in most transportation types. And that results in that results in on average across all energy sectors about twenty three percent reduction of power demand. Now another twelve point six percent of all energy worldwide is used to mine, refine and transport fossil fuels. And so by going to wind, water, and solar, uh, we eliminate all that energy use because the wind comes right to the turbines, the solar comes right to the panels, so we don't need to mine, refine, or, uh, or uh, transport fossil fuels. And so that's 12.6% savings of energy. We get another about 7% reduction of power demand by end use energy efficiencies beyond the business as usual scenarios, and this includes uh, reducing energy use. So a total of 42.5% reduction of power demand by going to wind, water, solar. So we need to satisfy that 11.84 terawatts uh, in 2050 by 100% wind, water, and solar. So this plot shows that we can do that uh, with around 23.5% onshore wind, 13.6% offshore wind, 31% uh, uh, utility scale solar, 26.5% uh, rooftop solar, both uh, residential and commercial. And then the rest of it, 4% hydroelectric power, 0.67% geothermal, and tiny amounts of tidal wave. Now, this is among all 139 countries that we examine. This is the uh, average uh, power distribution uh, for those 139 countries. Now, the timeline for transitioning is given here as about 80% by 2030 and 100% by 2050. Uh, in other words, we're going to transition about 80% of all conventional fuels, that includes fossil fuels, biofuels, and nuclear power. Uh, we're going to transition, we propose to transition 80% by 2030 and 100% by 2050. And this will, the result of this, will, will eliminate emissions associated or energy emissions associated with global warming and will eliminate all energy emissions associated with air pollution mortality. Uh, four to seven million people die each year prematurely from air pollution. So these plans should eliminate uh, most of that problem and will eliminate most global warming, although the impacts, the temperature impacts will lag behind the emission changes that we'll find. Uh, the other results of this study are that transition will create 24 million net long-term full-time jobs over those lost. So beyond those laws, we'll create 24 million more. Uh, we'll stabilize energy prices because fuel costs are zero. 
and will reduce the overall cost of energy to society because we eliminate health and climate costs and the direct energy costs are similar for wind, water, solar versus fossil fuels. So we, elim we reduce the overall cost to society by eliminating the health and climate costs in particular. We also reduce terrorism risk and we reduce disruption to power supplies uh, because we have more distributed energy sources and distributed energy is very it's more difficult to mechanically break, uh, bring down a bunch of wind turbines or solar panels compared to centralized uh, fossil fuel or nuclear plants. And so that uh, can reduce risk to power disruption. And because in the annual average, uh, these plans call for all countries to be energy independent, essentially, well, we can each country should be able to provide their own power in the annual average. Uh, this could reduce international conflict. Uh, however, it will be advantageous to actually transmit energy between countries uh, to reduce the prices or cost of energy even more. So in sum, we find that it is technically and economically feasible to transition uh, to 100% clean, renewable wind, water, and solar in all energy sectors among 139 countries of the world that we examine. And these countries represent more than 99% of all emissions. And we think even the rest of the countries should also follow us suit as well. Uh, thank you for paying attention and reading this, uh, reading this article.